But yeah, reading, um, meditation in the morning is huge for me. I know a lot of people that have a hard time with meditation as I did when I first started. But I was telling my dad that the way I do it is I envision myself, first I, I clear my mind, I kind of, I make it go blank, which is very hard to do even for me. Um, but then you make it go blank and then you just breathe. And then after I'm done doing that, I go up like as if I'm going up a ladder and I'm in a clear dome and I sit in my dome and I envision myself looking down at my life and I see the life in front of me and who I am like as if I'm above I'm like in the universe and I'm, I'm above myself and is it is it the life I love like is it the life that I've wanted is that how I envision my life is it is there something that I should be doing different and when I did rise above myself and I did look down there was a couple things that I didn't like and a lot of people are scared to take that time to think, oh my gosh, you know, how can I change this? Well, meditation does that for you. You can literally sit back and things will come up in your meditation that will help you think clearly about what you should do, even just envisioning it. Honestly, I envisioned the life that I have now by just manifesting it in meditation every day. I pictured it. And now I'm living it. So you do have to be careful what you envision because it does come true. Welcome. This is a very, very special interview that I have the privilege of doing with the beautiful Natasha Mead, who is my second child of three. And she is a master manifester. Self-proclaimed, yes? Yes. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, so Tasha, I'd like to welcome you to uh, the channel and of course I'm super honored because this is my one of my uh, wonderful daughters that I'm so privileged to actually interview. And Natasha has been manifesting a magnificent life through all the ups and downs that she's experienced in her life so far. She is currently the an executive casino host at the Bellagio Hotel. A very uh, challenging position to obtain normally, but for her, she knew she would get the position, and I'm gonna have her tell that story and much, much more. So stay, stay tuned for Natasha's marvelous interview. Tasha, how are you today? Doing great. Well, you <laughs> well, you're look absolutely beautiful as usual. Thank you, Father. So tell us a little bit about your journey in manifesting, because you have several methods and techniques that I know our audience can actually use. And this is going to be a raw interview. We really haven't prepared. We talked a little bit about it, but we wanted to keep it natural and flowing and just uh, see what comes up. So tell us your story. Yeah, well, um, basically I learned all my stuff from my dad. My manifestations, everything that has to do with uh, envisioning the life that I want from scratch, from the beginning. So when I was younger, my dad always had us do vision boards and it started from, it kind of, I would say started there a little bit, just basically knowing what you want and where you want to be in life is the number one, I think, key part is because a lot of people, they go around aimlessly trying to figure out who they are and who they want to be. But having a clear vision makes it come to life. And so by doing that, is if there is something that you want to be or become that person, it's best to have a vision board so that you can put into reality and see something that you have goals. Like you have that house on there that you want and you, this is the way I want to dress and this is the car I want. It sounds crazy, but for the most part, it's always worked for me. And I know for a lot of people it works. But basically, if you don't have that, you don't really know where to start from. You don't have like a starting point. Well, you've certainly achieved a lot in your life so far. <laughs> yeah. Still young and a long ways to go. Um, so tell us some of the things that you achieved and how it was your mindset. Because I know you told me there's several things that you practice that have led you to this. Um, things that I've taught you. And of course, you've continued in your own desire, reading books, mm -hmm. studying, learning better how to meditate and all the processes. So what are some of the... Uh, um, now, I'd like to know your, your methods, but also we're, we're, this is a... Uh, someone who has three children she's a single mother she had a spectacular life but she needed to make some changes in her life which now brought her to the point of being single and pursuing her dreams on her own really and she achieved 
a couple of very high paying, high end jobs the last five years. As I said, currently an executive at the Bellagio Hotel. And along the way, you had a, so many experiences. I know we only have time for so many. But in, um, in your, all the life changes that you've made, what are some of the processes that have just kept you focused that you know it's going to happen, you know you're going to manifest? Well, my process is really um, what I learned that's best for me, and I know for a lot of people, is having a steady schedule, like as far as keep making time for meditation, making time to read books on, um, you know, there's a ton of books that I love about manifesting and just having the like millionaire mindset and just your mindset has so much to do with the way you're going to live your life and so stuff that has to do with that but yeah reading um meditation in the morning is huge for me i know a lot of people that have a hard time with meditation as i did when i first started but i was telling my dad that the way i do it is i envision myself first i i clear my mind i kind of i make it go blank which is very hard to do even for me um, but then you make it go blank and then you just breathe and then after I'm done doing that I go up like as if I'm going up a ladder and I'm in a clear dome and I sit in my dome and I envision myself looking down at my life and I see the life in front of me and who I am like as if I'm above I'm like in the universe and I'm, I'm above myself and is it is it the life I love like is it the life that I've wanted is that how I envision my life? Is, it, is there something that I should be doing different? And when I did rise above myself and I did look down, there was a couple things that I didn't like. And a lot of people are scared to take that time to think, oh my gosh, you know, how can I change this? Well, meditation does that for you. You can literally sit back and things will come up in your meditation that will help you think clearly about what you should do. Even just envisioning it. Honestly, I envisioned... The life that I have now by just manifesting it in meditation every day I pictured it and now I'm living it so you do have to be careful what you envision because it does come true and maybe not exactly the way you'd want it like I envision myself being in a suit and I'm a realtor but you know now I'm um, as he said an executive host but I'm still in a suit and it's the exact same vision I had in a one-story home with my three boys and you know, being a single mom, I mean, I, I, I wanted this life. But yeah, manifestation, journaling, scripting, scripting is huge, putting everything into existence, you know, uh, instead of saying like, I want this, I want that, I have it, I have mm. this, I mm. have that. So I have, I have a, I'm in real estate, if it's real estate, and just scripting it out as if it's already yours, it's already in existence, you already have it. But then also just um, believing it, believing that it is, it's believing it's already happened, believing it's already yours. Now that's beautiful. You mentioned one of your <coughs> techniques, which is scripting. Tell us a little bit more about scripting. And then I think uh, you also, that we, we started practicing vision boards when you were quite young and, you, and that's something I taught you. So first about the uh, scripting, which is extremely important that she does. So she reads, studies, and meditates, but she scripts. So you actually write out your future as if it's done? Tell us about that process. Yeah, as if it's done. So, for instance, uh, I am a millionaire. <laughs> I have, I have a, well, three boys. And, you know, another thing that I, I know works really well, and the reason why I just said that, is because you, sometimes you'll put what you do have in there. So that helps as well. So, like, I have three boys. So you'll say, like, I'm a millionaire, I have three boys, I have a home at, in Summit. You know, now I'm kind of giving away some of my secrets on what I want. But, uh, you know, say it's uh, you want a, the new Corvette or a new Bugatti, whatever it is. I have a beautiful white Bugatti. The leather seats feel amazing. You kind of have to put yourself as like as if you smell it, you feel it, you're emotionally there. You are emotionally have it and believing it. The main thing is belief. You have to believe it. You know, Natasha, uh, one of the things I talked to you about that Neville Goddard teaches is that feeling is a secret. I love that you said you have to feel it, smell it, taste it, hear it as if you're already there. So 
And I also, that was interesting, I like the way you mix in actual things like your th you have your three boys. Right. And now, imagine she's doing all this as a single mother, one income. It's a long story, but her mm -hmm. ex is basically not helping her, so she's on her own 100%. Mm -hmm. So um, we're talking about uh, an 8-year-old boy, a 10-year-old boy, an 11-year-old boy that she's... Uh, <laughs> They're my grandchildren, my grandsons. They're amazing, but they're a handful. So mm -hmm. She's taking them to school. She's taking them to soccer and basketball. And to the youngest, he's doing acting lessons. And actually, he's auditioning for a movie right now, by the way. And it's another story. So her children are also getting that same mindset of success. You're yeah. teaching your kids the same thing, right? Oh, yeah. I tell them all the time, whatever you speak into the universe is going to happen. So be careful what you speak, how you speak about yourself, what you say to yourself, what you say to other people. Oh, I just did awful today. Well, the, you know, the universe is going to give you more awful. You have to speak into existence what you want to happen to you. So just changing your mindset and changing the way you speak is huge. That's a huge thing, too. Yeah, what you say to yourself is extremely important. And one thing I wanted to note, too, so some of you are younger like her, and you're in the middle of manifesting this great life through all the trials. Some of you are at my stage toward retirement, and perhaps you're in a different stage of life. But irregardless, you have to know what you want. You have to have that desire and a clear goal. So tell us about that, Tasha. How important is it? Because then it keeps you narrow-focused. Mm -hmm. So you are like, uh, what do they say, uh, t um, you're bulletproof. In other words, yeah. you're human, but I mean, regardless of your ups and downs, you're totally focused. Yeah, because if you don't know the person you want to be and what you want, you're not going to get it because you're not envisioned. So, for instance, I know exactly who I want to be, how I want to dress, what I want, you know, as far as everything goes. If you don't know that, you should definitely sit there, meditate, and think about who is that person that you thought you'd be, that when you came to Earth, you want to live this way. Once you envision that, once you know who that person is, it's a lot easier to become that person because you already know what you want. So every day you're thinking, how do I become more like that person that I'm envisioning that I want to be? You get clarity on what you clarity, want. And a lot yeah. of you uh, perhaps don't know what you want. You need to sit alone and really, uh, I literally went up to the mountains and meditated on what I wanted in my life. You need that alone time. And Natasha has spoken that to me before about in meditation, how in that meditation you have the, the privacy and the time to really get in touch. You can call it God. You can call it the universe. Mm -hmm. You can call it the quantum field, whatever you like, the fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. But you have a, a, an opportunity to really go within because we have to have these things on a subconscious level. Right. Now, I wanted to mention to, to also to our viewers is some of your parents, like Natasha, you might have also children, your parents. Can you help your children have that same mindset? Well, you can do it through teaching and talking to them and giving an example but another way that I did it that they often never knew about, I always imagined they would be successful. Mm -hmm. I knew my children would be successful. Yeah. So um, Tasha didn't have a trouble-free teenage life. I'm not going <laughs> to. She had her troubles. But no matter what she went through, I knew that when everything is said and done, she was going to be a marvelous adult, a wonderful parent, a wonderful person successful in her life, abundant financially, health-wise, and everything else. So I was, I would always envision that. I've done that with Alicia. Mm -hmm. I did that with Clayton. He was my, my, he's my son, Clayton. He's had, went through a lot more stuff that we can't talk about, but he came through all of that. Now he's responsible. He's actually a traveling rock star. He performs on tour in concerts around the world, recently going to Prague, Switzerland, Mexico, South America. And uh, he's doing fantastic. My other daughter, Alicia's, we're going to interview her later. That's the plan. She's the oldest daughter. She has got a marvelous husband, two wonderful uh, children, my other two grandchildren. So all of my kids are successful. And it wasn't because they were perfect or because they inherited income or because they were had a privileged life. We were normal, pretty much average, mm -hmm. middle class mm -hmm. people through your childhood, right? Right. But you've raised that level yourself through your desire. Yeah. Now you've traveled all over the world. I'm sure you could tell us a lot of experiences, but are there any highlights for you where you really felt that you manifested some experiences? Yeah.
I'm going to tell you about the experiences, but I like that you brought up about the kids thing because I do, I know that I got that from you, but I do tell my kids every day, oh my gosh, you're such a good actor. You're going to be the best actor. Like, I've already put it into existence that it's happening. Like, they're already going to be what I tell them they're going to be because parents don't do that enough where they, mm. they push them to be something just by putting it into existence. Think about it. If somebody kept telling you that, oh my gosh, you're so good at that, you, you, that's easy for you. Then you, all of a sudden you're like, is it? And then you become better and better at that mm. because you think it's already happened. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I gave them that belief mm -hmm. and I think that it really works because I mean, with my kids, I feel like it's already working. We'll see, we'll see the outcome, but I'm pretty sure that I already know the outcome. And that's the whole thing is just the belief. I do believe it, you know. That's that, that's, <clears throat> a, that's interesting that she said that a lot of parents, and this is just a general thought, but a lot yeah, of parents general. push their children to do something mm -hmm. to be successful. And a lot of times resentment happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're successful with resentment, right? Other parents just let their kids do their own thing, and whatever they want to be is okay. And they don't, not only do they not push them, but they, they have a very loose relationship and not instructing their children, just letting basically society and then television raise their children. But on the other hand, Natasha pointed out that she always envisioned that her children are going to turn out great, her boys, as I did with them. But she also verbally in her self-talk and in her outward talk with the children praises them for success that they haven't fully had. Mm -hmm. So she's telling yeah. her young eight-year-old boy he's an, am an amazing actor, and guess what? He's turning into an amazing actor. Yeah. Well, you know, just, just You're giving them the verbiage. belief system that you have, and you believe in them. They think, you know, and their their minds are so young right now. The more you believe in them, the more other people believe in them. The more they're going to do it. The more they're going to achieve. The more they're going to win. You know, they're all competitive children. Um, as far as the experiences, uh, I do have a lot of experience as far as manifestation goes. You know, everything. I kind of followed my dad in this way, where. I feel like people get stuck sometimes and they think that they can't move on or change their situation. Oh my gosh, I'm stuck in this job and I'm not sure if I should leave because of being scared of scarcity and fear. But really, if you envision yourself not being in that position anymore and because people change, that's probably the gut, like your gut instinct is going to tell you, you know? And you, the universe works it out for you. So if you leave and then and you and you make a clear vision of what you want, It'll happen for you. So for me, I knew I wanted to, to leave to go to L.A. I knew that I wanted to come and work at this nightclub in Vegas called Light Nightclub back in the day. I was only 20. When I interviewed, I already I just figured, you know, I, I got the job. Like, I, I had no doubt in my head that I wouldn't get it because that's the number one thing to get anything. So I just went in to the interview, and I was like, hey, like as if they'd been waiting for me. Like, hello, I'm here. I'm, I'm <laughs> hello, here. Hello, world, here I am. <clears throat> so uh, anyways, here. I got the, I have this job that I need, you know, and I, I don't, you can never go with um, something that you need. You have to act like they want you. Everything needs you, wants you. You know, you don't chase anything. You attract everything. So basically that's what I did. I just, I attracted it into my life, and then I became fast, like, I wanted to be in the best section, I wanted to be the number one, I wanted to achieve moving up in the company, and then I, I told my boss, I said, hey, when I'm 25, I always thought I'd move to New York, okay, let's do it. So I moved to New York, and though every single instance that something happened like that for me where I wanted to do something, and then I just took off and made it happen, it's always been the best decision I've ever made. Right, for you too? Yeah, so you took off, but you knew it was going to happen. She reminded me of a quick story myself, this very quick. When I was applying years ago, this was back in the day, this is 1985, when came back, I came back from living in Indonesia, and I needed a, uh, I needed a job really bad. I had, uh, Natasha was just born, and I had Alicia, and it was uh, a rough period economically in the recession-wise and all. Anyway, so I, I went and applied at a hotel for a waiter job. Uh, literally, this is back when I was uh, 25, 20, like 26 years old. And um, I put in the application. This is back in the day where you actually wrote out your applications. And it was a stack of applications, and there were hundreds of people. On the way out, I, I just happened to pass by accident down the hallway. The food and beverage director's name was on the, on the door. I literally felt I had the job. I opened the door. I knocked the door. He said, come in. He didn't know me from Mars, and I, I said, my name is Robert Mead, 
I'm a waiter. I put in an application. I want to work here at, at this hotel. I got hired that day. He literally called his food and beverage assistant, said, put this, put this man to work in, in one day. Yeah. But that was because I believed it, and I <laughs> took the bold step. She believed she would work at a high-end place uh, experience in New York City. She knew what happened. She applied for it. They took her. They, they accepted her and hired her. She had a fantastic experience in New York. We forgot to mention, actually, another thing is confidence. So even though you do have to have the belief and you have to envision it, script it, meditate on it, and, you know, really vision envision board, it, vision, board, vision board, scripting, everything, all of that is important. But going in with confidence is a whole nother level. You like you've already got it. You would, you, they've already been needing you. They've been waiting for you. But the confidence, the confidence in anything you do is what gets you anywhere. On top of everything else. Yeah. So that was an, just another thing that I wanted to mention, which you know a lot of people know that, but it's just it's so true. You the confidence and belief is everything. Well, you have a rock solid mindset, but it didn't happen by magic. You <clears throat> developed it. As you mentioned, through reading, through study, mm -hmm. through meditation, through scripting. She's really big on scripting, okay? And also uh, through vision boards. And I'll give you, a, uh, if I haven't already, I'll let you see her vision boards. Tasha, by combining those things, you actually, actually trained your... You program yourself. You program yourself. It's not yourself. letting the world program you right. with all the negativity of, I can't, I don't have the education. She had a no college education. Yeah, I know. She, she went straight it, out of high school and started working and, and developed this magnificent life. Yeah. But she did on her own the personal study, meditation, and processes that right. I teach on my site right. that um, mm -hmm. anyone can do. Yeah. Tasha, this has been amazing. Before we, before we let them go... Give me a couple, two or three things that you that that you would recommend, or what would you recommend? There's mothers out there with children. There's single fathers. There's couples. There's individuals that would like to use your processes and develop your mindset and have your same success. So, any any words of advice? Just keep at it. If you if you do do the process and you do manifest and you do meditate and you do all these things, study. Keep studying more, but also believe in yourself and believe that it's coming. The universe doesn't work as fast as you want it to work. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it takes time. So having patience and really believing it, because sometimes I think, oh, it's not happening, but it, it is happening. It's trust me, it's happening. However you, how you want it to come, it's going to come. So just be patient. And then the only other thing I have is if you're stuck in a situation, work, a husband, a wife, somebody that you don't, something you don't want, know that it's going to be okay. The universe has your back. You, it's always going to work out. So don't stay in something if you're not happy with it. If it's not your true self and it's not who you are, don't stay in it. Don't, don't be there with that. You can be anything and anybody you want to be. Just know that, know it and envision it and believe it and have the confidence and just get out of your situation and trust me, It'll come. The person you want to be, that the, the the person that you want in your life, the job you want in your life, you just have to you have to go out with no fear and just try get get it. You can do it. Yeah, that's my name. Well, as the father of this master manifester, I am so honored and I love her to the bones, as I do all my children. And I'm so humbled and, and thankful for her, the way she's turned out. And she has a lot more to come. So we're really uh, we're going to cut cut this uh, pretty quick here now because uh, we don't want to go too long. But we're going to have to have Natasha back because she has plans. She's working on becoming a life coach herself. All right, mm -hmm. you may be one of her future students out there. But mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your comments and questions. Yes. I'm going to have Natasha actually answer questions and comments I would love below. It. Mm -hmm. So if you comment and you have a question for Natasha about how she developed what she did or anything else that you'd like to say to her, please comment below and also please share this. I know Tasha's gonna to be sharing this video with friends and all of her social media to get the word out because she wants everyone to have the same life that she has that you can, but in your way, mm -hmm. whatever you want, not what she wants. 
and you can do this through all these all these great ideas that she's given us. Tasha, thank you so much Thanks, for being the most marvelous daughter, mm. along with Alicia and Clayton. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. And thanks for listening.